All right, Jeremy Renner, 18 months ago, you almost died. Mm. And now you just wrapped Mayor of Kingstown season three. How? Yes. How? Yes. Did you do it, that? It happened. It was all CGI. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did it via satellite from my green screen bedroom. <laughs> you know, like, I wish. Maybe for next season I'll do that. <laughs> it hasn't been that long. You were just here... Uh, beginning of the beginning year, of the, it had been yeah. one year since you were crushed by your snowplow. Yeah. And you walked through the door this morning just absolutely ripped. Do you know your body fat percentage? Are you like at a four? No, I don't care about yeah. it. I care yeah. about, you know, the next step is yeah. the next step after that. I, I tried walk. I went this different this time. I didn't take the elevator oh. from the parking garage. I took the stairs. You did? And? Yeah, yeah. Not, not bad. Not okay. bad. Not great, okay. but not bad. What hurts? <laughs> Everything. Everything hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every every joint. Every okay, joint. every joint. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, the, it's really really. I think the tendons and um, and swelling that happens around um, the joints. That yeah. Create, um, the, it's more discomfort. I only really have pains in my life. Yeah. I don't think um, it's just more discomfort. I think. Yeah. So um, so when you were filming and you're on set. I heard you say that you did more like child hours, minor hours, because the fourteen-hour days just weren't going to happen. Yeah, fourteen-hour days I don't think are good for anybody. Yeah, um, and I think the the crew kind of, um, everybody was really on board with it because I was falling asleep in the middle of mm. the, the day and or the scenes at the, or the end of the days. I just got really tired. I had no endurance. Yeah, and that's what I was mostly afraid of. And <clears throat> it was getting to the point where I was going to have to go home if we didn't change it. So <clears throat> we kept trying to find ways to. Figure out: Do I work three days, regular hours, or do you work like you know five days and mm -hmm. just half days, or how to do it? And I said, we just listen to the body, and because that's all I do, it's all I can do, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so we just kind of treated it like a, like a minor, and that seemed to work out great. And then uh, everything turned the corner. I got stronger and got to get the season done, which yeah. is great. That's great, and, and I know that you were really happy that you did come back, so that the uh, the entire production could be there and work yeah. again. Yeah, it's the only game in town in Pittsburgh, and um, it would be really unfortunate, you know, because we just had the two strikes, right, with the writer strike and then the actor strike, and um, I, I certainly was going to try to go home because of because of because of me on it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people need the jobs. Man. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah, so a lot of people would be without jobs for a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, right? It, yeah, so. It was, it was important for me to get it done. I'm glad we did. And uh, everybody was really happy and pretty yeah. thankful, and we got a great season ahead of us. So, Mayor Mike, oh, yeah. and I love what you what you wrote um, on your Instagram about the Beverly Center. with your Oh, baby. yeah. Yeah, that was random. Sam actually sent me the that photo. Yeah. And then um, she sent me the one that was there from, from last time. That's the one I saw from my ICU room. And ironically enough, this is like literally the, you know a week after the accident, I looked better in the ICU room, then on the poster, I could look pretty messed up. <laughs> Mike it has all these cuts and st staples and all this stuff on my face. Oh, no. And then I had the room, I looked actually pretty good. <laughs> I think it was, a, I, did, I took a photo of it somewhere. I didn't post it at all, but uh -huh. I of me like doing a selfie with that, that in the background. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Last funny. year, uh, this ad for season two was in this very same spot. The only difference is we saw it from the ICU room at Cedars. I'm so blessed to have health and strength to work somehow again. And now you'd be looking at your rear view mirror this year. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a full circle moment for you. Yeah, it's nice to have little reminders of, of progress. You yeah. know, I'm, when you have a head down and just, you know, focusing on your next step and your next breath, it's you don't really kind of see, see too far ahead or certainly don't look back. Mm -hmm. And when there's moments like that to um, uh, have reminders, and, and but healthy, wonderful reminders, not... Because I do get haunting reminders every time I'm I lay sure. down at night. Yeah. I sleep in the position that I got ran over in. Oh, my God. It's just a natural side sleeper uh, I am. And it's like, that's exactly how I got crushed. And so oh it's like, God. I'm always reminded negatively of, mm -hmm. of that. But um, I move through that pretty quick. But it's nice to get, like, you know, little Easter egg reminders of, of goodness, man, how far yeah. you've come. And like like I said, like you're like <laughs> just me walking in the room of, well, of a different strength and, and prowess is like, exactly nice, you man. you were doing a lot of like stretching last time you had to yeah. get up a couple times just because you know you Can't had sit to. too long yeah, yeah. from yeah. sitting too long and now yeah. you're like you know i don't know what you are <laughs> i think there's something to be said too with handling this whole thing with humor because like i mean most people mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to like kind of poke fun at this or, or laugh about it but yeah. we're, ellen and i were laughing today at one of your quotes you go i was really anxious to get back to work and that's when i realized that it was probably cheaper to die oh way cheaper to die <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> it's true. I mean, Robert just turned me to ashes. What's that? A couple grando? Get a little vase? 
Right? Just get it, and then you were done. <laughs> Dude. That, I don't but then get, you'd I, leave the world so sad. It cost me like sad. five grand just to get out of bed now. <laughs> Jeez, man. All these shots and all these things you got to do. It's like a pit stop at the Indy car race. They got the, you know, Oh, the, I know. I love drills. that. I was just there. I, I was I was in the hot pit. Oh, yeah. And they came up, this, this female Crazy, driver in a right? pink car. They came up, and I was like, I, I'm a garage girl now. I just want to be around cars. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, really awesome. Pretty like, so you voiced the, uh, you did the uh, six hundred. Oh, the NASCAR. Yeah, yeah NASCAR that was six, cool. Yeah, that was really great. We got to do that in uh, in New York. That was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. So I mean, you just have been working constantly, and you are like everything about you in this short amount of time has changed. So when you look back to not even eighteen months ago, I mean, it's remarkable what you've done, and you say that Ava's been your life force. Yeah, 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 of course. She's always been the consistent sort of um, throttle for me to to push through and to uh, get out of my own way. I, I don't really have any feelings, man. I, my feelings are about how do I make her better and mm. make her family better and all those that I affected from the, the incident. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> it's always been, she's been like the number one fuel for me. And to see the pride on her face as I get stronger and I get better and, um, and happier and mm -hmm. I, she gets her dad back, right? Yeah. So it was my... So that is my only responsibility, my only duty on this planet, and it's to you know make her better, mm -hmm. give her every opportunity. We had uh, uh, we played this game. The Alan K Q and A today was uh, what's the coolest thing that our dads have ever taught us, and it was like the number one thing, and it's how to change a tire. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what do you think is the coolest thing that you've taught Ava? I mean, besides just about living life, like just a skill, a skill. Like mm. have you taught her how to? Uh, fish or yeah, I mean all those things. But yeah. I don't know. What, what, it'd be more what she considers interesting. I think piano for her okay, would be like right. something that she's so because it's something we both do together. Mm -hmm. It's nice when you know when you have you know have a daughter that's she's so young, but you can find things to do together instead of like sitting in the stands and, part, and just you know yeah. spectating them yeah. grow up. It's nice to do things with them. I mm -hmm. think that's so. I always look for things that we can do together. Yeah. And piano was one of them. And so we, we play together. We watch each other play. We teach each other. And she's better than me at this point. So, um, <laughs> but that's like one thing that, you know, it's great. And it's also yeah. become, it's a big part of our lives, music. And mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's one thing I think for sure that she, she would say. Yeah. Well, congrats on number one on iTunes. I mean, you, Jeremy puts Love and Titanium out. It was number one. I remember we texted and you were like, can you believe it? I'm like, yeah, I can believe it. <laughs> it went in a day. Mm. I think in a day it was it hit number one. So I know you made the mini movie uh, on, for your video for Wait yeah. with Ava. Yeah, we put that out on News Day, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. God, it seems like a long time ago. I know, doesn't well, it? Because you've done so much in that time. <laughs> you really, I mean, look, you 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 did ten episodes of Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. You ripped your body. Um, mm -hmm. You relocated. Now you're leaving again. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got to prepare for um, some some work in London, and then. But I got most important. I got the foundation uh, stuff, the renovation. Yeah, foundation stuff tell us about running. it. So well, you have the, summer camp. Big big summer camp coming up. Got a hundred. It's more than hundred kids now. Um, it's we've gone over the limit, but it's gonna be great. <laughs> most of these kids. <laughs> you, never... you don't seem like the kind of guy that could say no. No way. No. <laughs> not, to, not to these kids. I'll, I'll give them everything. These, yeah. Most of these kids don't get outside much, let alone ever see the lake. Mm -hmm. and it's a lake community, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they're going to have access to this lake all week long and the firework barge that's out uh, there and, and all these um, all these amazing opportunities that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to give it to them consistently. These these kids always need a light on for them, so we're going to try to be that for them. Yeah, that's so so no more room. Can we put can we put up a link? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. You know. Jeremy can't my, say no. My sister, my sister, she's uh, <laughs> she's she's the one that's kind of running that stuff now, which is also really great too. The, yeah, uh, the family's really come in and been amazing, supportive, and because my sister works for child services, and uh -huh. so it's kind of like easy for her because she yeah. always, already works with foster youth all the time. So um, this is really, really great sort of um, side side thing for her. It's it's, uh, it's helping me immensely. Mm, that's I can't awesome. wait! I can't wait! I'm, it was the thing I'm most excited about this this year and and uh, every year, uh, every summer coming. Yeah, it's when you see those kids' faces, it's, yeah. it's so rewarding. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a lot of fan comments on you. Um, oh man, this is from Nick. Oh man, welcome back, brother. You just got back up and dusted yourself off. Deep respect. <laughs> Will says, "I just want to give thanks to Paramount and Jeremy and the rest of the team for pulling through what he went through." 
to still do this means a lot. Um, I love Jeremy Renner as Mike McCluskey. Can't wait for season three. <laughs> <laughs> so um, does Mike get more um, more uh, involved physically, violently? Does he have to this season? Because you're up against the, the Russians now? Yeah. The, it's it's kind of back to business as usual because mm -hmm. it was a bit more chaotic last season of mm -hmm. like – with the prisons and the riots and all this sort of stuff, right? But now it's kind of like more back to business as usual. But it starts out with, you know, uh, you know, nothing, nothing good happens with with mom, and then, and it was actually really great because where I was at in my life personally it was pretty, yeah, heavy anyway. So we kind of ease into that. So I felt like there's there's a bit more tenderness and people that rally around uh, Mike and the family a bit. Uh -huh. um, but with that, there's you know there's new. People that come to town, there's new uh, AB and new Russian uh, mafia and some new baddies, so it makes it great. Um, it's, it's definitely um, a lot of explosions and fights and mics. I didn't think I was going to also be able to do the, the fight stuff. That, you know? That's and right. The, I heard you say episode, you did all your yeah, the stuff. the first episode, I'm like, I said, just use a stunt guy. There's no way I'm going to be able to do it. Uh huh. And then, you know, the day came and I put on these, put on some tennis shoes and I said, like, let's just go do this thing. And like, man, it worked out great. So they kept writing all the... The stuff that he does, and it worked. Out. It looks all. It looks great too. And it's, uh, didn't need a stunt guy. I'm super, super happy that we were able to do it, and I was able to perform it. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh my god. So you, I mean, yeah, season three, in the can. Yeah. By the way, that guy behind you right there, he's Russian too. So if you guys have any, <laughs> any business to take care of, I don't know. What, I don't know what kind of. All right, lay hands on a woman, see what happens to you. <laughs> I'm gonna smash it down, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Father's Day is coming up, middle of June, June 16th, and usually it's it's us honoring our fathers, but I know that you're all about your daughter, Ava, and, you know, we asked you, what's the thing that you've taught her? What is what has she taught you? Ooh. And she's is she still 10? Has she turned 11 yet? She's 11. She's 11 yeah. now. Yeah. Man, she, she teaches me every day, every day, um, patience, um, the depth of, of love, you know, mm -hmm. how... Uh, like how, I don't know. It's like the, the idea of like, I didn't think um, making my daughter proud would be such a valuable thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, she teaches me how to to, to, to live, to live with, um, I think we're both learning a lot right now mm -hmm. in, in this sort of, I don't want to say rebirth for me, but this, my life is very, very clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very focused. Uh-huh. Without having to do much, there's no white noise, and with yeah. that, my daughter feels that and sees that. I might be busy, uh -huh. but I don't hear anything. But this conversation in front of you, yeah. like, there's nothing going on in my brain uh -huh. about anything else ever. Every time I'm with somebody or anytime uh -huh. I'm doing anything, so you, you, typically we can get pretty distracted by things. Our lives yeah. can get really muddy with a lot mm -hmm. of you know appointments and things, and I gotta go get my you know whatever these things done. But there's none of that. None of that. Yeah. Of that's that. a gift. And then, so we're sharing this together. So um, she teaches me a lot in that because I'm really, really wonderfully present with her. Yeah. Uh, and she's going through like her, you know, young young girl stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just really just get to witness and, and watch her go through and just be there for her. And this, it's like, yeah. it's a little bit more hands off kind of parenting at this, at this stage, I feel like. Uh huh. You know? It was around 11 years old. I remember my mom asked me to do something. I said, no. <laughs> yeah, it was the that first happens. time I said yeah, yeah, no. That, that's and she happen. said, like, yeah, I, you don't <laughs> say no to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said the same thing. I mean, wait, 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 you can say no to anybody. You don't say no to dad. <laughs> yeah. And then, but, but she did a step you probably never would. She washed my mouth out. So oh. <laughs> I had to go in the bathroom and wash my mouth out. Mm. I will never forget that. And I was 11 years old. And I never said no to her again, at least not in that way. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. like, no. Yeah, you are probably bitchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the age. I was 11 too, and I told my mom, said, Ryan, time to come inside. And I said, guys, and I'm not proud of this. To this yeah. day, I said, shut up. <laughs> that was that was about the end of that. Yeah. So my dad fixed me up real quick. <laughs> you used to have a bike. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got a project in London. You've got, like, like are you... What what else is going on? You've got your foundation. You got the camp. Oh, I heard you're going to write a book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's I, I, that's I've a, because know. there's just not enough hours in the day. Yeah, yeah you right. need more yeah. to do. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's really cathartic. I'm glad I'm doing it. it music was one way to, uh -huh. to to share it in, yeah. in one way, but, but because of that, there's been so much that's come up, and um, there's been so much interest in it. So 
uh, I feel it's like a, an honor to do, and it maybe, and it's kind of a duty of mine to do. I feel mm-hmm. responsible to do it because mm-hmm. there, it, it is not, it didn't just happen to me. It happened to a lot of people. Yeah. And there's, there's something we can all learn and share from this. I can separate myself from this incident, but learn and learn from it myself of what what's transpired and what I've what I've grown from and how how I, how I can grow and um and there's I, I think that should be shared you know yeah um so if there's anything inspirational to 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 share I, I will and uh, mm-hmm. so we'll be discovering a lot of stuff along the way um it's been really interesting pretty cathartic and uh, hopefully you get it out you know probably by the end of the year yeah yeah Pushing through, then bring it back here. Do you have a title yet? A working title? Uh, there might be a working title. Um, we think we think maybe uh, my next breath. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. Um, it, yeah, it, that keeps coming up. Uh-huh. Uh, so we're using that now because it does refer to a lot of. If you zoom out and think of just mm-hmm. consciousness to to your breath, there's just like you know that's how I actually survived on the ice to and everything in between. Yeah, um, how important it is for for all of us to be to be aware and conscious, right? Unreal. And, yeah. uh, Run around the radio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one thing you said to Ellen and I last time you were here that really I think stuck with us was you, maybe it was just different. Maybe we were in a different place six months ago when you were here, <clears throat> but you told us that you couldn't believe how many people cared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, have you come yeah. to a better place with understanding Well, that's that? why I think I got into the idea of a book and sharing the got idea. It. It's it's still difficult for me to receive, but I'm, I'm get, I've got a lot better at receiving the goodness and the kindness and the love because it is ultimately, you know, the collective positivity and collective love is ultimately what got me through it yep. mm-hmm. and still gets me through every day, right? So I feel like writing the book is still going to be our story to share and I'll just be the director of it mm-hmm. and, and, um, and share share the narrative. So, um, yeah, so that I think it's that got me to want to write the book mm-hmm. ultimately just because there are so many people involved and invested here. Yeah, and through the music and the book. And look, in many ways, probably with Mike McCluskey, that must have also been, I'm thinking, you know, watching the trailer, you probably got a lot of, uh, a lot of, I don't want to use the word rage, but a lot of, I don't know, what would it be? Like when you just want to, you know, when you go box and you feel so mm-hmm. good afterward. Yeah, I don't have any of that. You don't have any of that. Up, you don't have no, any pent I up. have nothing but hu- humility yeah. and... Um, and uh, love, mm-hmm. I, I've, this is, I was like zero. Yeah. I mean, it, it would take a lot for me to get mad. At something. Uh-huh. I mean, mm-hmm. I can, might get frustrated with something, but like to get yeah. mad or angry at something, like, it, I'm so far from that mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I mean, I'm just, with every step, I'm just like, damn. This so is grateful. Awesome, man. So grateful. Yeah. For every, every breath and every step. Like when those yeah. jacked arms ripped that suit in half, you had to feel like, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Did, did your neck size go up to your collar size? I have size? no idea. I don't. I don't measure this stuff. I just. I just try to. Yeah, I you just knew. Oh my god, yeah. it's working. I just know that when I work, when I work out, my joints don't hurt so much. Yeah, because it puts blood flow through mm-hmm. everything. So then, like, either it's temporary or not. But at least, and then not. Don't get me wrong. I don't like working out. It's yeah. the worst thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do it because it makes me makes me um, not not. Uh, Feel so shitty. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> I love the uh, Brooks. So you've got the Brooks running shoe too, and they told you you would never run, and now you're endorsing <laughs> running shoes. Yeah, like that's also. I I like that everything that you choose to do has such big meaning behind it. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. you know, to endorse something is you know you have to. I believe it has to be sort of part of your DNA yeah. in some way. Otherwise, why do it? Man? Mm-hmm. I, I've never, I never do things for money. It's not, yeah. it's not the, it's not the objective. I mean, those things are it's icing on the cake, of course, right? In the uh-huh. society, you need it. But uh, it, the, the drive for me, the driving force, is always getting behind something because you believe in it. Because with my heart and my legs or whatever it is yeah. on this one, and the, the, the narrative of, of that commercial is is essentially just about recovery and to, to inspire and to, to get anybody to, to get up and run there. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I do too. And you do again, too. I'm not a runner. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't before the accident, you know, and certainly barely one after. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not running any distance, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but there's the fact that that you can, and it has not been that long. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's another reason why everything you're doing is just so important for people who are going through, you know, maybe a lot less, maybe maybe even uh, you know, the same kind of thing. So yeah, we well, milestones are huge, it. right? For, I think mm-hmm. what people might be connecting to is milestones. Because mm-hmm. <clears throat> I've always said, 
you know, even if it's a silly milestone, it's like, I remember, there's one, and maybe it's too graphic, but like, I remember just not having to pee in a jar anymore. Yeah. It was a great milestone. Uh-huh. I had. Like, I'm going to the bathroom in a toilet. Yeah. And was like throwing <laughs> her hands up in victory, right? Like, this uh-huh. is amazing, Dad. I'm like, well, so, but that milestone may seem stupid and silly, mm-hmm. right? And people might relate to that. Yeah. Right? And I take it to that level because I know a lot of people struggle. Mm-hmm. But that's a milestone and it should be taken as a victory. Yeah. Because it's better than a damn tombstone. Yeah. You know? Okay. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. you know, keep. You know, celebrating every chance you can get, you know, yeah. and that that was at least for me, every chance I can get, I think, all right, I can do this now. I can sit up. <laughs> uh-huh. I, can, I can look to the left or whatever the heck it was. Right? Yeah, for like sure. They're, they're giant. You know, there's little victories, man. You know, these are little things that sort of pat your back in progress mm-hmm. and uh, you keep going. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. Well, thanks for all the lessons and gratefulness, Jeremy Renner. <clears throat> and thanks for coming to our show. I'm always happy to be here. Yeah, we love having you. The mayor of Kingstown is in the house.